welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you for coming back. Um, so today we will be recording at least the first part um, where I'm going to go over some um, different ways that you can look at. Um, you can find your parcel number, but um, the second part of the session, we're going to be talking about goals. And so we won't be recording that part of it. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so class two. Um, so for this class, we are going to be talking about some ways that you can prepare to work with your forester. Um, so we're going to uh, start by showing you how to find your parcel number, um, and then we will um, start talking about goals, and then we'll end it with kind of a mini homework assignment that will um, hopefully help you get thinking about um, things that you can talk to your forester about. So first, we are going to talk about your parcel number. Um, so a parcel number is a number that is assigned to a parcel of real of property by a tax assessor of a particular jurisdiction for the purpose of identification and record keeping. Um, basically, this is a number that is assigned to you through your county um, that helps you identify your property. Um, and we need that number for a forest stewardship plan because that helps connect your forest stewardship plan to the particular really or the particular property that um, you're working with. And so I'll also say parcel numbers are going to look very different um, depending on what county you're in. Some of them are very short. They're only, you know, maybe five uh, numbers. Some of them are a lot longer. Some of them have dashes in them. And so I'll show you a few different examples. Um, but don't be surprised if your parcel number looks a little bit different. So um, I'm going to talk about some different resources. So there are a couple of different ways that you can um, find your parcel number. And the first one um, is using this Wisconsin statewide parcel map. Um, and so I believe that Bill will put some of these links in the chat for you. Oh, he's already done it. Look at that. He's on top of it. Um, and then I will also send the, these out in an email later. Um, so you'll have a couple of different ways to find it. Um, but so this is one of the first ways that you can find a parcel, your parcel number. Um, so I'm going to use an example address that I have. Um, and so this one is in Marathon County. Um, one thing that will make it easier for you to find your parcel number is if you know what county um, your property is in. So you want to just make sure you know that for sure. Um, so the first step is you have just come to this website and then you are going to hit search by address. And so essentially you are just searching by the address of your property. And so I have one here. Um, now, one thing I will say is they do have um, instructions for how you should put your address in. So for example, if it's road or if it's street or if it's crossing, you wanna make sure that you spell those out. Um, another important detail is if it is, for example, a highway, um, so a state highway or a county highway, you're going to use these particular um, abbreviations. And so the one that I showed you here is um, a county highway. So if we look down here, county highway is CTH. So I'm just going to go in here and change this. So it still has the number so of the property and it still has, you know, what the county highway is, but you just changed that abbreviation. So then you just hit apply and then you have your parcel number. And so this is what a parcel number for Marathon County looks like. 
Um, but also, if you select um, here, then you can also get some more information um, about this property. So for example, you can see that um, the current assessed acreage of this property is 33.66 um, acres. Um, so that gets you your um, parcel number. Another thing that I want to point out is that if you want to look at the parcel um, or look at the property as a map, you can also do that. Um, so to do that, you go over to this search function right here. And then here, I'm going to copy and paste the actual address. And I'm not changing it to that special abbreviation that it says. So you can see here, I'm leaving it as County Highway. Uh, we're not seeing the what you're doing right now. Oh, okay. Um, you can't see the search thing that just came up? No, we cannot see that. Okay. I can see it on my phone. Oh, good. And I can see it on my screen as well. <laughs> I guess it's just okay. me. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody, for chime, chiming in. Okay. So I'm going to try to move you out of the way. Got it. Got it. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you can hit search, um, and then that'll take you to that property. And so you can kind of move it around um, so you can kind of see it better. You can also zoom in and out. Um, over here, and then go back here. Oops, this is actually the one I was trying to look at. Then you can kind of see it here. Um, another cool thing you can do is you can actually change it to satellite view down here. So if I hit that, then you can kind of see the satellite view. And so you can see that the property that we're looking at is pretty wooded here. And it also kind of gives you the outline as well. Um, so this is one way that you can look um, for your parcel number and also get a good map of your property. Um, this is a third party website. So it might not, you know, if this property got sold recently or if it, um, you know, if something changed, this one might not be as up to date um, as some as the other resources that I'm going to show you. So another option, um, you know, if you're having trouble finding it through this website, or if the information is not correct for whatever reason, um, you can go straight to the county because that should also have. Um, that should also have the information. And so Bill awesomely made this website for us so that you can just search by your county um, and uh, find the county website to um, look for your parcel number. And so I'm gonna just do Dane County. So if I hit that, it is gonna take me to this website here. Um, and so each county uh, has their own system for this. So it might not look the same as this. Um, it might look a little bit different, um, but this is you know, just one example. And so let's say I was looking for something in Dane County, then I would go to parcel address right here. Um, and then I have an example address that we can use here as well. So we have this number seven. And then it doesn't have a direction. And then I'm going to just copy and paste. But also, you want to just delete the road because then you want to add road here. There we go. Um, for this, 
you don't necessarily need to fill in all of the information. Um, you know, you want to make sure you're filling in enough information that it can find the record for you, but you don't need to necessarily fill in everything. And so we can hit search. And so then this also gives you information. Um, and again, up here, you can see the parcel number right here. Um, and so this parcel number looks very different from the Marathon County parcel number. Um, Dane County has some dashes and, um, you know, is a little bit longer as well. But again, it gives you that information. It also gives you information um, about the acreage as well, I think. Yep. Assessed acres right here. Um, it's taking a little bit of time um, for it to load, but it does also give you a map similar um, to uh, the other site that it kind of shows you the outline of the parcel number, um, or it shows you the outline of the property here. Um, but I think I'm doing a lot on my computer right now, and so it's maybe having a little bit of trouble. We can We can come back to it. So yeah, this is a second way. Um, this is going to, again, this is connected directly to your county. So this should have more up-to-date information. Um, if you are searching for your property and it's not showing up or it's not looking correct, um, then you would wanna make sure that you're reaching out to the county that your property is located in. Um, I'll also say that these links, um, you know, we have put them together, but uh, it seems like one um, platform that counties use has a little bit of trouble. Um, so for example, Fond du Lac, um, if you select that one, sometimes this works, but sometimes it asks you to log in. Um, if we found that if it asks you to log in, um, if you just close out of it, so go back and then come back to it again, then it should pop up um, again, the search menu that you can use um, where you would enter, you know, your street, uh, the street of the, of the property, the name um, and all of that. Um, yeah, another thing you can do um, if you know this link is not working is that you can also um, just search so you can do your county name. So let's say we're doing Eau Claire County, and then you can do something like parcel search. And then that should bring up, you know, that um, website for Eau Claire County. Um, you know, if it's not coming up with parcel search, you can also try terms like tax record, tax parcel ID, um, parcel number, um, but any of those um, searches should hopefully uh, bring up a website that looks like this. Um, and some of them also have, you know, mapping websites. So for example, Eau Claire County also has a mapping website where you can zoom in on your property and then the parcel number can sometimes come up, although it's maybe having trouble loading. So those are a couple of different resources. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Does anyone have any questions about finding their parcel number? There was a question about if there's a charge for the search. Oh, no, there is not a charge for the search. Um, they... Um, yeah, this is something that's provided through the county, so they don't charge you for it. Any other questions? Is the street address always work? Because sometimes people don't necessarily have a street address associated with it, their property, or it's like it's not on a road or something. Is there any any thoughts on how to do it? Does it search by your name then a better or the name of the ownership, the better way to go? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, yeah, if you're having some trouble, you can try doing um, some of these other things. So you can try searching by name. 
um, you can try searching by, you know, name and township. Um, so, you know, just try to fill in as much of this information as you can um, to try to help it come up. Um, the other area that can get a little bit tricky is you want to make sure that you're thinking about who um, technically owns the property, um, because that would be the name that it would be searchable. And some properties, for example, are, um, you know, owned maybe under an LLC or something like that. Um, and so again, that's an area where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, if you're having trouble, I can try to help you. But another option is also you can always read, reach out to your county um, and they can try to help you find that information as well. Awesome. Yeah, and someone brought it up that also it should be included on your tax statement as well. So, yep, that's a good point. Okay. So that um, is how you, those are some ways that you can find your parcel number. Um, so next we are going to move on and we are going to start talking about goals. So I'm going to share my screen again. So another thing that will help you um, prepare for working with a forester is starting to think about the goals that you have for your property. You know, last week we talked about how that was kind of front and center in your plan, but um, that will help you, if you thought about this, this will help you kind of lead your conversation that you're having with your forester um, as well. Um, and so, you know, there are a lot of different uh, goals that you might have. Some common reasons that people have for owning land include hunting, you know, include that the property is beautiful and you just want to be um, out in nature, maybe access to wildlife. Privacy is another pretty common reason for owning land. Um, recreation, family, you know, passing it down to future generations, uh, trying to use it as an income source for and having timber sales, you know, all of those are reasons why people might own land. Um, but many people also have some concerns about their property. You know, they want to make sure that um, the land stays intact or that um, the land stays the way it is. Um, or maybe they care about forest health. And so they want to make sure that they have a healthy forest. Um, you know, maybe removing invasive species. Um, some landowners have concerns about trespassers. And so all of these things will, um, you know, contribute to what your goals are for your property. Um, you know, for example, if some of your reasons for owning land are you want to be able to um, have a timber sale, then you really are going to focus on management activities that help you um, have a sustainable forest and maybe have different age classes on your property so that you can have periodic um, timber sales. Or, you know, for example, if you really care about recreation, maybe you like to snowmobile on your property, then you're going to want to have a good set of trails on your property to be able to do that. Um, but, you know, also concern. If people are worried about deer on their property, maybe that means putting up deer fencing as a management activity um, to try to, you know, regenerate some um, forest that you care about. All of these things, you know, help you move on to the next step and help your forester come up with a plan for what you're going to do. And so because of that, we are going to now do an activity um, where we're going to get into breakout groups and we are going to talk about some of our property here, um, to try to help start coming up. Oops. You got a sneak peek of what we're doing after. Um, we're going to do breakout groups where we're going to talk about some of these things, uh, so that you can start thinking about it and coming up with ideas for what your goals are. Um, 